The first body of BMF will be J-Mo. After T gets shot in the eye by an unknown person, Meech is on the hunt to figure out who was trying to take out his brother. Rumors start to spread in the streets, started by Lamar, that J-Mo was the one who was trying to take out Terry. The reason why people believe J-Mo would attempt to take out Terry was due to them beefing over territory. Meech will find out about this and have Detective Brian pick up J-Mo and drop him off where Meech and B. Mickey was at so they could beat him up and ask him questions on why he would attempt to take out Terry. J-Mo would deny that he had nothing to do with Terry being shot. And with Meech not believing him, continues to beat him up. This is when Meech will pull out a gun and put it to his face and ask him, Is you the one that shot my brother? J-Mo will continue to deny it. And with Meech being hesitant to pull the trigger because he doesn't know if J-Mo's telling the truth or not, B-Mickey will be the one to do the job and take out J-Mo. This will cause issues between Meech and B-Mickey. The next body will be Rock. After Meech arrives to the spot to buy three keys of powder from Pat, who turns down Meech and tells him he's not ready to move that type of work yet. And tells Meech he's going to give him three bags on consignment and a brick outright. Which Meech disagrees with because he believes him and Terry already proved in a short matter of time they can move work. But due to Pat making sure Meech and Terry doesn't leave under his wing. Because Pat doesn't want Meech and Terry to become bigger than him in the drug game. And to lose out on money that they could have made together. He tells Meech this is the situation. This is what it is. And he's not changing his answer. Proving his dominance over Meech and to keep him under his wing. And Meech has no other choice but to agree with Pat. As Meech is getting to work from the storage room for Rock, Rock will inform Meech that Pat's fallen off in the drug game and that he couldn't even sell three keys of coke if he wanted to because he'd been using the powder. That's why he fell off. In order to help out Meech move up in the game, Rock knows of another supplier that Meech will be interested in. Later on, Meech and Terry will meet up with Rock and both sides come to an agreement that Rock will be paid 20 up front from the guys and he will receive 5 points on everything going forward due to him making the deal happen with the new supplier. Rock will set up a meeting between Meech and Terry and a new connect. While going to the place of business and find a table to sit at, they receive drinks with a note attached telling them to head out back. As they head out back, they are approached by two gunmen who puts them in the back of a truck. As nighttime approaches, Meech and Terry is taken into a field where both of them see Pat and Rock with shovels in their hand. Pat finds out that Meech and Terry went behind his back to find a new plug, and he sees it as disrespect. Meech would tell Pat, put all the blame on him because Terry has nothing to do with it, so put him to the side and spare him. Pat would flip the script. Instead of taking out Meech and Terry and hitting him with the shovel, he would then turn his attention on the rock and hit him with the shovel and take him out, beating him to death by caving his head and face in with the shovel, and he tells Meech and Terry they was doing a job, but Rock wasn't doing his, so this is why he's being taken out and for betraying him. After taking out Rock, Pat would tell Misha Terry to bury the body. The next body will be slick. After it's revealed to the audience that Kato is working with Lamar, she would give up information about Misha Terry's stash house, and this would cause major consequences for Slick in the long run. Lamar and Slick would team up to rob the stash house, and while Hoop is coming back to see if anything happens in the stash house, he gets shot at, but he's managed to shoot Slick in the leg as he's running away. As Hoop gets shot in the shoulder by Lamar, Lamar was going to finish the job, but Kato comes in and saves the day, busting back at Lamar, running him out the stash house. Hoop would go back to Meech and Terry and confirm it was Lamar that robbed the stash house, and he had somebody with him because he shot him in the leg. Meech and Terry would come up with a plan, and the plan is to kidnap Zoe, Lamar's daughter, in order to get the stash back. Lamar will become furious and tells the crew to find where his daughter is at, but also to find where Meech and Terry lives at. Slick and the crew will follow Terry, but it was a trap. The trap was to kidnap Slick, torture him in order to get the stash back. Terry and B. Mickey would torture Slick because he wouldn't give up the information where the stash was located. After beating him up and torturing him plenty of times, Meech will arrive and realize the guys still didn't get the information out of him. This is when Meech comes into play and talks to Slick one on one and tells him either he gives up the location of the stash or he would take out Zoe because he's very desperate to get his stash back. And Meech tells Slick to choose wisely because if he have a chance to save Zoe but he didn't due to over a stash, Lamar would take him out viciously because he didn't save his daughter. Slick gives up and reveals the location of the stash. Slick returns to Lamar with Zoe, with Lamar being pissed off at Slick for giving up the stash. Will Lamar mind her revenge? He will go to the crew to tell him to take out Meech and Terry once and for all, but the crew will turn their back on Lamar and tell him his time is up and it's time for him to go. With Slick being by Lamar's side, they tell him he could leave too, or he could be taken out with Lamar if they stick around. With Slick being the only person by Lamar's side at this moment, Slick would tell Lamar 
he is too angry and he has to calm down in order to figure out what the next move is going to be in order to take down Misha Terry once and for all. Then afterwards, they could cut off the water of Misha Terry. But Lamar tells him, if things doesn't work out, he's going to be the next one to be taken out. With Monique rejecting Lamar because he let Zoe get kidnapped, Lamar would take out his frustrations on Slick, singing, You can't stop the rain, while stabbing him as he crawls out into the living room and bleeds out on the floor. The next body will be Darius, with his mind set on revenge. Lamar was still trying to get at Misha Terry by attempting to kidnap their baby sister, Nicole. Lamar would see Nicole and Darius in the alley, and as he pulls up in the alley, he would get out the car and try to grab Nicole and attempts to put her inside the car. But Darius intervenes, and Lamar gets pissed off and stabs Darius in the stomach two times. Nicole goes running for help and returns to see Darius bleeding out on the ground, eventually being taken out due to his stab wounds. The next body will be Detective Lopez. With Nicole being questioned by the police after being attacked by Lamar and her friend was killed, the police suspect that it had something to do with Misha Terry's street business, but Nicole did not snitch and fold on her brothers, leaving the police with no answers. Afterwards, while Brian is in the store and Lopez is in the car, Brian would come back inside the car. Lopez would notice the 50 boys walking down the street and chases after them. While most of them escaped the wrath of Lopez, he managed to catch up to Meech and tackles him to the ground. Before he could put handcuffs on Meech, Kato would sneak up behind him and bashes his head in from behind with a pipe. Eventually taking him out, the next body will be Kato. As it was revealed earlier in the season that Kato was playing both sides and working for Lamar, she will eventually be found out by B. Mickey after Lamar goes to B. Mickey house after seeing Kato laying in the bed and orders her to take out Meech or he was going to take her out. B. Mickey was furious and wanted to take out Kato for playing home, but due to him having feelings for Kato, he couldn't do it and he was hesitant to pull the trigger. So she asks for his help to take out Lamar, which she agrees to. The next day, as Kato meets up with Lamar in order to set him up, B. Mickey will follow him, but eventually he will get pulled over by police and arrested and questioned for the death of Detective Lopez, him and the 50 boys. But due to the police having no evidence, the 50 boys is released. After taking out Lopez for him, Meech is very interested in talking to Kato and finding out where she came from and her upbringing. While in the car talking to each other, Kato would talk about her upbringing and how the way she was raised. She tells Meech that her father's name was C. Love and he used to run around with a crew called BK, aka Black Killers. Meech asked her that her father used to run with Lamar and his crew called the Dale Ray Boys back in the day. She said no. And this will later on cause Kato to get taken out. Later on, after talking business with Boom, Meech will ask Boom, have you ever heard of an old head named C. Love? Which she has. Coming to find out from Boom, C. Love didn't run with the Black Killers. He used to run with Lamar and the Dale Ray Boys, which surprises Meech. Finding out about this new information, Meech will go to B. Mickey and ask him, can Kato be trusted? B. Mickey will lie and say yeah, until he changes his mind and tell Meech the truth and says she's been working with Lamar the whole time. Meech tells him, he already knows that Kato has been working with Lamar and just wanted to see if B. Mickey was going to be loyal to him. So Meech and B. Mickey comes over the plan to take out Kato and Lamar for good. Later on, Lamar will sneak around the repair shop where he finds out that Kato was trying to set him up and goes back to the bar to confront her. With his strap pressed against her, he leaves her out the bar where he's confronted by Meech and B. Mickey. He holds it to our head, but Meech doesn't give a damn because she's a rat and he wants her gone for good. The plan was to use Kato in order to get to Lamar so they could finish him off. Lamar will push Kato out the way in order to get at Meech first, but Meech will open fire and put Lamar on the ground by hitting him in the stomach. Kato will run away and hide behind a car, but B. Mickey will spot her and shoot her once in the chest and shoot her once in the head, taking her out for being a rat and lying to him. The next three bodies will be Wink, Big L, and Cinderella, all done by K-9. After K-9 Wink better 20K on the basketball game that they was both coaching for their teams, K-9 will lead his team to victory, but Wink believed the rest was paid out by K-9 so he could win. After rejecting to pay 20K to K-9, K-9 will pull out his strap and blow Wink brains out in front of every Everybody after the basketball game. Later on, as K9 is discussing business with Meech, Big L will pop up. K9 will introduce them to each other, but Big L reveals that she already knows Meech and says that he's a great salesman, but she wasn't sold. Slightly throwing shade towards his way, which K9 noticed. This situation comes from season one, where Big L agrees to do business with Meech and Terry. This is when she noticed Meech is very flashy and Terry minds his business. He doesn't want the spotlight. So that's why she chose to do business with Terry directly and not Meech. Due to him drawing a lot of attention being flashy. In order to look out for Meech and teach Big L a lesson, he would cut out her tongue and have it wrapped up in a watch box as a gift to Meech. It reveals to Meech Big L had a big mouth, so she had to go and tells him. 
When they violate, we demonstrate. The next day as Meech and K9 is talking business. Somebody pulls up and opens fire on K9, Meech, and the rest of his crew. Wilder is shooting back at the dude. The dude will stop the car to make a run for it, but leave one of his shoes behind. K9 notices it's somebody from Wayne's crew and promises to take care of them when he catches them. Later on, after talking business, K9 would take Meech to the other room and let him see the body of Cinderella, the man who just ran away earlier, and told him when they violate, we demonstrate. The next body will be Travis. After finding out his cousin in Cleveland got yanked, Meech goes to K9 by a re-up, but K9 tells him, try again a couple of weeks. But Meech tells him, it's a drought going on, and he can't wait. And he would do anything possible in order to get the work from K9 quick, fast, and in a hurry. So K9 tells him, in order to get the work quick, bring him back Travis, because he owes him a grip of money. And under one condition, you gotta bring him back alive, not dead. Meech agrees, so he teams up with B. Mickey to get Travis. Later on, they would track him down at his house. And recognize he is with K9's girl, Peaches. In order to get him at the house so they could get him, they would set his car on fire so he could come out. He recognizes his car is on fire and he goes out to go see about it. But once he noticed B Mickey, as Travis got the strap in his hand, he would start busting at B Mickey. B Mickey will bust back and chases him down. Travis will run back inside the house as he closed the door and B Mickey face. As he goes in the house, he would notice Meech is coming from the back door and start busting at him. And as they get into a shootout, B Mickey will come inside the house. Him and B Mickey will have a shootout with eventually B Mickey putting a bullet in his head. The next five bodies will be Neto. Tiny, Saki, and the two PA boys. All done by Lamar. After being shot by Meech, Lamar is put into a coma. Everybody believes that he is dead, but only the police know that he is alive. The police are waiting for him to get out the coma so he can snitch on Meech. That's why they ain't telling nobody that he is still alive, but the streets believe he is dead. After coming out his coma, Lamar does not plan to stay in the hospital for long, so he chokes out a detective that was on the watch out for the room. Fast forward. After trying to figure out what happened to himself, his cousin Alvin tells him he's the beast and use all your doubts and concerns and use as an advantage. And this is when Lamar goes on a revenge rampage to go after everybody that did wrong to him. While Neto is coming out the restaurant eating food, Lamar will creep up behind him and start viciously beating him down with the wood. Pause. As he put the wood in his neck, pause, he started bleeding out. Then put the shit bag all over his face. Pause. The reason Lamar did this to him because of season one, Neto and Tiny was ordered by Meech to take out Lamar for good. And by shooting shooting Lamar in the arm. He never forgot who did that to him. He would leave Neto dead in the streets. Later on, as Tiny is about to get ready to clap some cheeks, Lamar would creep up after him like Candyman and bashes his head into the mirror. Tiny fights back and they get into a scuffle. Lamar would kick him in the face, instantly putting Tiny down. Then afterwards, Lamar would grab the toilet tank and bashes it across his head. Then suffocates him with plastic around his face, eventually taking him out. This is similar to season one, where Lamar chokes him out with the belt around his neck. Almost taking him out then. Episodes later, after Meech and Terry comes back from Atlanta, Lamar would set his sights on Saki. While he is taking a piss, Lamar would creep up on him and shoot him in the stomach. And while Saki is still talking crazy to Lamar, Lamar would take the final shot, instantly taking out Saki, leaving him laid out against a car. The reason he did this to him because in season one, he was in on the plan to kidnap his daughter with Meech and Terry, and he never forgot about it. And plus, he disrespected him to his face. And you know Lamar can't go for that. After Saki gets taken out, Meech will get higher help from the PA boys to finish off Lamar for good. When both of the guys get the drop on Lamar, they will follow him to the store to finish the mission. And while hiding under his car because he knew they was coming for him, and with the help of his dog Blackie, Lamar will shoot one of the guys in the head, instantly dropping him, taking him out. And while Lamar hits the other guy in the leg, Face down, looking at Lamar. And when Lamar got the strap pointed to his face, Lamar asked him that Meech sent him. The dude said, F you. And Lamar blows his head off, taking both of the guys out for trying to take him out. Then his body will be raising. After Meech finds out for raising that K9 owes a Colombian Connect $20 million and don't want to pay him, Meech comes up with a plan to take the Connect away from K9. This plan includes Meech and Terry becoming suppliers instead of buyers. Raisin will be the one to set up the meeting between Meech and Terry and the Colombians. With Raisin being the middleman and setting up the meeting between Meech and Terry and the Colombians, he want a percentage on everything going forward. This will also include him going behind his cousin's back. K9. Once Meech and Terry goes talk to the Colombians, everything go as planned. Meech will also look out for K9 in this deal. Meech will tell him, supply them with the work. And they will pay back K9's debt that he owed to them in exchange for his life. And during this meeting, Meech will find out that Raisin betrayed him 
and Terry. Raising will lie to the Colombians and tells them that Meech will come with the $20 million that K-9 owes them. He will also lie to them and tell them that Meech will take out K-9 so he could take over. This raises a red flag in Meech and he tells Sterling Black to keep an eye on Raisin just in case he do anything sneaky. The red flag pays off as Meech and Terry is about to go get the keys that was sent by the Colombians back to the U.S. Raisin will sneak up behind Meech and Terry and as he attempt to take them out, he will get put down by Sterling Black. The next body will be Monique. After getting Zoe kidnapped and putting his hands on Monique and being on her, Monique don't want nothing to do with Lamar no more. Her strategy is to make it seem like she wants to get back with Lamar. And as Lamar gets comfortable around her, she will get the gun and try to put him out for good. But once she has the opportunity to do it, she frees up. This will later on will backfire on her. While trying to have some fun, Mo will bring out some crack. She wants Lamar to hit the pipe first, but he gets a hunch and he wants her to do it first to see if she's trying to set him up. As she hits the pipe, she will begin coughing and Lamar realized she was trying to set him up. This will piss off Lamar. He will begin choking her and swing her around the room, but eventually Mo will fight back. She will grab her vase off the table and bust his head with it. This will piss him off even more. He will begin viciously choking her out, eventually taking her out, leaving Zoe and Sierra without a mom. The next body will be Ty Washington. After coming back to Atlanta and paying him back for looking out for them during the drought, they would talk business that afterwards, Misha Terry would have dinner with Ty and his family, which would lead to them spending the night at his place. The next morning, Misha would tell Ty that they are going to Magic City, and he wants someone to come with them. Ty wants to go, and Meech tells his wife he's going to bring him back before the sun comes up. While Meech and B. Mickey are making connections in Atlanta, Terry is having a conversation with a hitman, and he's paying him to take out B. Mickey for being a rat. It's supposed to go down after they leave the club. After the club, the hitman starts to shoot at B. Mickey. At the same time, Remy will pop up and starts to open fire. This is when Ty Washington gets caught in a crossfire and ends up being taken out. They will leave Ty Washington bleeding out on the floor and leave him there as they don't want to be caught by police. The other bodies include the ones that got caught in the crossfire. The next body will be Marcus, Kevin's bully. After being bullied throughout the season by Marcus, Kevin will reach his breaking point. While at the basketball court, Kevin and his friend are looking at comics. Marcus will come up and smack the comic books out of his hand. While finally standing up to Marcus, Kevin will miss a swing on Marcus and Marcus will beat him down. This prompts Kevin to go back home and get the gun that was in the safe and goes back to the park and takes out Marcus for bullying him. But Detective Brian hold it on to the gun so he can have something on B. Mickey in order to get B. Mickey to snitch on me. This will backfire on him as his son Kevin will be charged with three bodies with the bodies of J-Mo, Kato, and Marcus. The next body will be Mike. After being pissed off that Misha Terry finessed him out of a dice game, he goes to Goldie and tells her, give up the information on Misha Terry so he can take them out for good. Goldie tells him no and he returns back later on with a shotgun taking down anybody in his path. But eventually, Meech will shoot him in the stomach. Then Goldie shoots him, then he falls to the ground. As he's talking crazy to Goldie, Goldie will stand over him and puts a bullet in his head, taking him out for disrespecting her. Once he figure out Meech and Terry was working together to finesse him by acting like they didn't know each other during the dice game, he wanted revenge and he wanted his money back. Knowing that Mike is connected to the mob, eventually they will find out who took him out. So she wants to ditch town and bring her sister with her. But eventually, her sister will pass away due to her having AIDS. Her sister wanted Goldie to take off life support. Goldie didn't want to do it, but eventually she had to because her sister was tired of fighting and she just wanted the pain to go away. The other deaths include Lamar's dog Blackie and B. Mickey's mother. This concludes the body count from season 1 to season 2 of BMF.